this Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 Betting Picks Edition of the NASCAR Gambling Podcast here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick up for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB, NHL, golf, NASCAR, F1, and more. Sign up today using promo code RACE SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We are also brought to you by the premier arbitrage sports betting tool, AVO. Use their tool to bet both sides and lock in a profit. Access their platform for free at arbsvsodds.com. That's A-R-B-S-V-S odds. Dot com. Plus, in honor of the Masters Week, the Golf Gaffling Podcast guys are giving you a Toyota made or Taylor made Spider X putter for free. Enter at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. Driver, start your in and pull those belts up tight as the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presents the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. I'll wreck my mom to win a championship. I'll wreck your mom to win a championship. With all the news and the best bets for your NASCAR weekend. It refrains me from not beating the out of you right now because you ask me stupid questions but since i'm on probation i suppose that that's uh, in- improper to say as well if you could talk about racing things we could talk about racing things. now here are your hosts rod via gomez and cody zeeb Welcome in, everyone, to another episode of the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. Here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, he's Cody Zeeb. I'm Rod Villa Gomez. Cody, we move to the great state of Texas for the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. Another mile and a half track. Actually, the first in a very while. Uh, but the the first of the cookie cutters, yeah, as, as they say. Um, I guess familiar settings for these guys this week, huh? Yeah, I mean... It's is it really a cookie cutter anymore, Rod? I was looking back. There's only we only have seven mile and a half races last season. So it's just it's not really a cookie cutter anymore. But yeah, obviously we had Vegas a couple of weeks ago, so we've already kind of had a look at the mile and a half. So good to be back in a mile and a half. Uh <laughs> you know, a couple of years ago, Rod, I, I don't know that I would have thought that I ever would say I'm excited to go back to this Texas Motor Speedway this week because the racing there in the past has been not very great, really, to be completely honest with you. And and uh, now we're coming off of a couple of short tracks in a row where the short track package needs work, right? We've talked about that. So uh, now we get to go to a mile and a half where the racing's been really good. The one we've had so far this year in Vegas was a thriller, came down to the end with, with Reddick trying to run down Larson. Um, so I think we're in for, for a pretty good week of racing and all three series back in action once again, which is great um so yeah should should be a good time yeah and again i mean let's talk about going back to a cookie cutter and being excited for it given the fact that we haven't really had many and it's been road course short track uh then mile and a half and the super speedways and quasi super speedways like it just feels to me like you got to catch your breath at some point and i think this is definitely a chance for them to catch our breath and maybe a a chance for us to catch our breath too because you know in researching this there's only a few names that really bubble up to the surface. Now, granted, obviously, we're going to take our shots on some of these other guys as well. But, I mean, look, man, I I about six names, seven names came to mind right away when I started to, to research this track. And then the research kind of backed it up a little bit. So it's kind of like, well, I mean, hopefully we cash on some chalk this week. Uh, but like we said, we've got some other stuff to, to toss in there as well. But this should be a very... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say chalky track, but I don't know. I think it's going to be, I mean, last week, you know, we thought it would be really chalky and it, it really was. I, I think the mile and a half are definitely open to some other, there's going to be some other names we talk about this week that we haven't brought up the last few weeks. So I, I think yes, towards the top of the board, I would expect Larson and Byron and Hamlin and Reddick to be fast, right? That's probably going to be your core group of guys out front. Um, but beyond that, I, I think that it does, Maybe not quite as chalky. I will say, 
Uh, first of all, where the chat is blowing up, so love to see that. Appreciate you guys listening. If anybody sees top five or top ten odds drop while we're doing the show, drop them in the chat because, again, books, what are we doing here? Like, we've got all this stuff out, but no top five or top tens? Come on. You're killing us. Um, I don't know if but, they're scared, but that's ridiculous because well, they've got all these scared. other ones. They've they're got all scared, of the, the specialty ones they're, out there. No top fives and no They have specialty ten. ones. They're hiding behind the, the locked door. You have to have the secret key to get to because they're scared of them and then they don't even give out top fives and top tens for real what are we doing so uh, i did formulate some of my own top 10 odds that i'm going to be giving out in a little bit um but also a good advertisement to stay tuned in the discord sg.pn slash discord go over there um i'll officially update those numbers whenever they do come out maybe they'll drop by the end of this show and and we'll be able to to get talk about them a little more but We'll probably reference them later in the week on some shows and then definitely have some some plays in the Discord as well. Speaking of shows, I want to take this opportunity to tell you about one of our favorite. It is the Golf Gambling Podcast. Those guys over there are doing the Lord's work. And this week, in honor of Masters Week, the Golf Gambling Podcast guys are giving away a tailor-made, not a Toyota-made, a tailor-made Spider X putter completely for free. They're giving it away to you. Be the most well-equipped guy or gal on your putt putt course with this i guarantee you right now you will outshine every other toddler out there with the putter that looks this sexy you want to enter right now go to sports slash masters own your mini golf course i only say that because i don't golf so <laughs> all right rod let's catch up on the chat real quick walter in the chat boogie 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 let's go racing old-fashioned football another great show on the um, on the network, make sure you're checking out Justin and Miranda. They are our favorite hosts. Uh, we love those guys, so check them out. Uh, Boji Joe saying, if the weather is warm, let's go Tyler. Uh, I was very disappointed when I pulled up the odds this week, Rod, and they were not sleeping on Tyler Reddick like I had hoped. Um, he mentioned Eric Jones as someone to watch. I don't think Eric Jones made either of our cards, although top 10 number I would definitely be interested in. He's a guy I tried to find a way to get in on. Again, not knowing the actual top 10 odds. I wasn't sure on him where to, where he might be, but uh, definitely somebody you would look for. Also saying it won't be a pit stop race. I mean, and, you know, they'll be a key like they always are, but it's not just pure track position like the last couple of weeks, which is nice. So Robert checking in. Thanks, guys, for Eckes over Smith, plus money for a guy who dominates. Easy peasy. Make sure you're checking out our recap shows always on Sunday nights, a lot of the times, Mondays sometimes as well um where, where we go back and talk about all the bets good and bad they hold ourselves accountable so um you know if you just tune in for the cup race make sure you're checking that or, or the cup pick show every week make sure you're checking that out as well to go back we walk through the process why did we bet it were we stupid for betting it was it a good bet even though it didn't cash uh dusty gotta stay hot he's been on fire lately sending some slips jdk echoing eric jones drake saying 25 to 1 on K can you imagine the day rod Kyle Busch is 25 to one a couple of years ago. You never would have thought it won three races last year with RCR. Now he's 25 to one. I wanted to make a case for him this week, Rod. I couldn't. Uh, His just, name is at the top of all these, all these lists. And I just can't do it. I can't pull the trigger on him. Sorry. Yeah. Well, he's had a rough couple of races at Texas too, getting wrecked out in both races, but yep. CT checking in. Uh, yeah. Anyways, chat chat's blowing up, going crazy. Um, I've got some top Toyota thoughts. Jones, not the top Toyota, but uh, AJ is the dad that I'm more excited for truck Xfinity than cup. Uh, hey, listen, if you've been following the show for a little while here, you know, I know some people, we, we see the numbers, right? Some people only listen to the cup show. That's your cup of tea. That's fine. You know, we appreciate having you here, but uh, Xfinity and uh, trucks, oh, we've been doing pretty well over there lately. So make sure you're checking in those shows the next couple of days as well. And it's a whole weekend. It's not just about the cup race. Uh, although obviously that is the main attraction make sure you're getting in on on the whole week indeed uh all right it is of course the texas motor speedway in fort worth texas we are set for 267 laps around this 1.5 mile paved track for 400 and a half miles of big action big fun under the big texas flag out there at fort worth um like cody said i mean this is obviously it's a mile and a half and it's it's what we consider the cookie cutter uh but when you look back at at the the races on this one it's been a mixed bag and in the next gen uh generation here it's definitely even been a lot more different obviously these guys don't come out here twice a year 
right? So uh, they only get one crack at this track every single season. But in the last couple of years of the next gen, it hasn't been as crazy as the, what, 200 and some odd laps that Kyle Larson led in 2001 to win this. Like you well, we talked about, it, just a very, very dry and, and uneventful race with Kyle Larson just sort of taking control and not giving it back. But in the last couple of seasons, we've seen some tosses. We've seen some turning. In fact, um, there was one bet that I wanted to throw in. I don't remember if I did it or not. Uh, I did not. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, but there was also like a, a lead changes. There's Caesars is giving you a chance to to give you uh, how many lead changes there are. And 22 was the number that was set and almost took the over because there was 36 lead changes a couple of we uh, years ago and uh, 22 exactly. So I didn't feel like we had an edge there. But still, I mean, there was a lot of action on this track. And I feel like there could very well be that same sort of action this week, too. Yeah, I mean you're still going to have guys that sit out front for stretches, right? Bubba Wallace led 111 here in the fall. You know, Kyle Larson led a ton at, at Vegas earlier, but there's going to be plenty of action throughout the field and throughout the rest of the day. Uh, that's a lot of lead changes. So, you know, maybe we will see that many. We'll see kind of how pit stop strategy and, and whatnot plays out as well. Yeah. Cause I don't think we're going to see very many cautions either. I know that there's been a few uh, races where there's been at least 11 or so cautions. Uh, but this was, I wish, I had to find it. I wonder if it was. Well, I'll see if I can find it here in a few. But the number of DNFs uh, this season is like an all-time low. Like it is super, super low. Um, but it's not for... surprising though, because these guys have been able not just in the next gen generation in total, but like they've been able to get the cars back out, and and there haven't been that many destroyed. Now, three, four years ago, before this this carbon fiber body. I mean, they tear their cars up, and and it barely even got touched, right? But this one, they can bounce off of each other. They can essentially just kind of run into the wall headlong and and kind of back their way up and and bring the car back out again. So I'm not really surprised about that, and I almost like it better because it gives an opportunity for some of these guys to keep going, you know. And and if they don't take a whole lot of damage, right, they can still be competitive. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, all right. Well, then I think uh, we can pretty much try to to get to our bets here. In yeah, just a two. second. Okay. Yeah. Well, two, see. Go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. I got two two things first. Uh Bob Labani passed away this week. Uh big, big news there. He's uh the father of Terry Labani, Bobby Labani, both Cup Series champions, also a two time car owner and crew chief um champion in the Bush series, now known as the Xfinity series, of course. So just wanted to say rest in peace to Bob. He's definitely a legend around the garage and having two Hall of Famer sons. Obviously, uh, he, he definitely did quite a few things correctly in, in his time. Um, and then, Rod, the entry list, actually a pretty exciting entry list this week. Ooh, so tell. we've got 38 cars. Um, so they will all make the make the race because it's 40, 40 cars. So your weekly rotators, Kaz Grawl is back in the 15, as he has been most of the season. Um, Ty Dillon back in the 16 car again, hashtag chasing trophies. Um, then we've got two open car entries. Uh, RCR, you know, things are going so well at RCR. Both their cars are doing so good. Why not add a third car, right? Because, I mean, everything's just going going silky smooth over there. So, um, but maybe not so much. But they are adding the 33 this week. Austin Hill will be driving the 33, making a start. Um, I know we like to bet on him top five every week in the Xfinity Series, Rod. And we'll do so on tomorrow's show, I'm sure. Uh, but not in the Cup Series, for sure. And then uh, Jimmy Johnson back in the 84 car again this week. So Rod is pumped up and excited for that um, because, yeah, Jimmy, it's Jimmy Johnson, man. Greatest of all time. Because I hope he doesn't wreck out of this one. I honestly <laughs> hope that this is a wreck in which he doesn't find himself on the wrong end of a wreck. Maybe this will be the first time in that 84 car he runs more than eight laps. Oh, top tens and top fives are up on bet 365. JDK, I love you. Very interested to see how close my numbers were on on the things. But Rod, do the ad read, and then we'll get into the bets. <laughs> I'm excited. I I'm telling you right now, it's a loaded card for me this week, and and there's a lot of stuff I left out. So article coming on the website this week. Make sure you check that out because there's going to be bonus bets in that. SportsGamblingPodcast.com. And uh, if you're not in that Discord, you're missing out. I'm, I'm telling you right now because there's going to be a lot of bet and talk in there this week. In 
indeed. All right. Speaking of a lot of fun talk, Underdog Fantasy gives us the chance to talk about a lot of fun stuff. We're going to once again load you up with all of our favorite Underdog Fantasy plays for all three series now because that's the way we roll. What's Underdog Fantasy? If you don't already know, well, you should know. Uh, all you got to do to play Underdog Fantasy, especially for this racing part, is pick better or worse than the finishing proje- uh, the projected finishing positions of each driver that's out there. It could be Cup, it could be Xfinity, it could be Trucks, it could be even F1. All you got to do is pick those drivers, pick their better than or worse than finishing positions. And of course, they got other sports on there too. There's baseball going on. There's still a little bit of basketball going on. There's a couple more sports that are out there. You just pick higher than or lower than their projected stats. And we just uh, go from there. You build up to about five. If you want to go up to five, you get anywhere from two to five picks and watch that multiplier jump up. Find those spicy chilies. They're going to give you an opportunity to earn a potential of up to 100x on your entry. It's a fiery, spicy chili for a reason. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, we'll give you all of our favorite picks as they come up this weekend. So sign up today with our promo code Race SGPN. Get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pickup special. So visit underdogfantasy.com and fi- or find them in the app store. Don't forget to register with our promo code race sgpn to get your first deposit doubled up to 100 as well as that instant pick em special must be 18 or older and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates terms apply concerned with your play call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org all right rod real quick catching up on the chat one more time kozlowski and busher top forward lock it in says cygnus x um CT asking if Caesars has the underdog style bets up yet. They do. I will go through and explain how to get to them here in a minute because I've got some bets over there. Um, does Kyle Bush win this race if he gets to drive the previous generation car? I mean, does Michael Jordan win at the NBA if they're playing with the old? I, I mean, you know, it's it's hard to know, right? It, is he with Gibbs? Is he with R- If he's with the previous generation with RCR, no, he's definitely not winning. It's a previous generation with Gibbs. Yeah, maybe, but it doesn't really matter because, uh, you know, Robert says he might bet it all on Bell this week. I got some thoughts on Bell we're going to we're gonna give here in a few. So AJ says fading Hendrick this week. That's a pretty ballsy mood, giving Ford and Toyota a shot after last week. And Walter wants to know, Team Penske to win plus 650. Kind of likes that bet. Any thoughts? Rod, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say no. Uh, I, I, have, I have, if only... The only one that I really give a shot to, I think at this point, is Logano. I'll have a thought on him later. But uh, you just just don't take this. You just bet Ryan Blaney at nine to one because well, yeah, Blaney's been really good here, and Logano. Good luck ever figuring that out. So AJ saying Jimmy Johnson's two hundred to one. What a headline that would be! Put that in your back pocket, AJ. We'll talk about that at Dover because that's where he's going to get it. Yes. That is it. Uh, all right. Well, then, Cody, let's go ahead and get to the betting card for this uh, Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive four hundred. Everything's bigger in Texas, including the names of the races. So, It is. Uh, all right, Rod. For this first one, as I wrote in the document here, we're going to go over to the Caesars Secret Backdoor Speakeasy where they offer extra bets they like to hide from everyone. So uh, shout out to Phil over Full Tank with Phil for pointing out how to get here and uh, helping us find this. So you have to go into the Caesars app. You have to click the NASCAR tab, and then you have to click View for the race, the Auto Trader, Echo Park, whatever. Then you have to hit futures, and then you click on the. Oh wait, now it's not working. Why is it not working, Rod? Oh my goodness. Because you want it to. Okay, all right. So you don't hit view. So you go to the NASCAR tab, and you just expand the race, the name of the race, and then it'll say William Byron race winner with the odds boost. Underneath of that is the name of the race, NASCAR 2004 Auto Trader at Echo Park, whatever, blah blah blah. If you click on the name, it opens up the speakeasy where they have these extra bets hidden for whatever reason. There is finishing position bets. They've only got five listed right now, but I'm actually going to start with two of them as my first bets, Rod. I will say, if you're listening live, a lot of people are. We appreciate that. Keep the chat rolling. Um, Or if you're listening early in the week, these only stay up for a couple of days. Usually by like Wednesday evening, they're gone, and they never put them back up. I don't know what the point of hiding them behind this crazy door is, I don't know what the point of not offering more is. I don't know what the point of of not keeping them up long is. I don't know if they're just testing it and they want to see what people do or what the case is. But anyways, Rod, I'm going to hit two of these. I'm going to hit Denny Hamlin 
to finish under 6.5. That means finishing better than 6.5, uh, minus 115. And I'm also going to hit Bubba Wallace under 12.5, so better than 12.5, also at minus 115. Uh, look, Denny Hamlin, I mean, he is really good everywhere. We're, really, we know that, right? He's got multiple wins already this season. Shows up and he's strong. Um, he started 28th place at Vegas earlier this week. He was third place by the end of stage one, Rod. Drove up through the field. Had no issues there. Ends up in eighth place at the end of the race. So just outside of that 6.5 here. Um, but if you look at the car he owns, Tyler Reddick was running down the leader at the end. His teammate Ty Gibbs finished fifth place. So the Toyotas were strong. The Gibbs cars were strong as well there. Multiple wins. I mean, you go back and you look at, at Hamlin last season uh, on mile and a half. Wins Kansas one. Probably should have won Kansas too. Tyler Reddick ends up stealing it from him on a late uh, race restart. Um, you know, he won places like Pocono, other places as well. So Denny Hamlin's been very strong on these um, tracks. And uh, let's see, fifth and tenth the last two years at, at race um, has multiple wins here as well in the past. Third place at Michigan, he won a Pocono as well. Um, so all of those things go in the Denny Hamlin bucket. For Bubba Wallace, Rod, he is really fucking good a mile and a half. So this is where he's got to figure it out. This is his bread and butter. I know we like talking about him as a super speedway guy. Those can still be gambles, though, of course. So mile and a half, though, is where Bubba Wallace has it. Let 111 laps here in the fall. Late caution. Byron gets around him. He ends up finishing in third place. Um, before that, um, he had a, a sixth-place finish back in the first race with 20. The first season of 2311, he was the only car, right? They were a new team figuring stuff out. Sixth place, nice, solid, strong run from him there. Had an eighth place finish here as well with Richard Petty Motorsports, which is very impressive because that team was not very good when Bubba was racing for them. Um, uh, he ran into trouble earlier this season in Vegas, so bad result there for him. But last season, uh, sixth place finish at Miami, third at Kansas. He was third at Kansas, too, before he ended up having the tire uh, go out on him, hit the wall. Third place at Texas, of course. I just talked about that. Seventh at Darlington. He was fourth at Charlotte. Fourth at Kansas. One. Fourth at Las Vegas. Bubba Wallace is good at mile and a half. 12.5. You're not even taking him. You're not betting on him to finish top 10, Rod. You're betting on him to finish top 12. You're getting two extra spots at only minus 115. Um, so like that for Bubba. And then the Denny one, uh, 6.5. So basically better than both on those guys. So when we see the underdog fantasy lines come out, right? Maybe you see what those guys are at there, and if they're similar to those lines, of course you would like the better than as well. Uh, but those are definitely two guys uh, I'm targeting on this uh, Caesars backdoor speakeasy, knock three times and say the passcode to get in uh, area of the book. Uh, I will say that it's not available on the website. So, or I mean, if it is, then it nobody must be uses websites. websites. Rod, we all have mobile <laughs> devices. Listen, you kids, and your damn websites and your Dan Fogelberg and your www dot. <laughs> I don't even care. Your Zimas, your hula hoops. Uh, all right. I'm going to go. If you know, you know. I'm telling you right now. If you know, you know. Uh, I'm going to go since there are no individual top tens. Caesars is giving us uh, a multiple top ten. So, sort of a top ten parlay, if you will. And my top ten parlay, uh, pre built already, of course is uh, Larson, Hamlin, and Truex all to finish inside of the top 10. You're getting plus 150 on this one. And honestly, if you, I mean, look at our friends at iFantasy Race have put together a 2024 NASCAR total speed rankings to date at conventional tracks, quote, heading to Texas. Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., top three names on the list. I could stop my argument right there. I mean, Ryan's a smart guy. He's telling me that the speed rankings at these conventional tracks are all the top three. Larson, Denny, and, and Truex. And it tells me all three of these guys have a better than average shot at making into the top 10. Uh, you look at Kyle Larson, ranked first at Vegas, 13th at Phoenix, fifth at Bristol, third at Richmond, second at Martinsville for an average of 4.8. Denny Hamlin, seventh at Vegas, fourth at Phoenix. Now, granted, these are all rankings, not the finishing position. Don't get that twisted. Third at Bristol, sixth at Richmond, fourth at Martinsville for a 4.8, tied with Kyle Larson, Truex. Fourth at Vegas, second at Phoenix, second at Bristol, first at Richmond, 18th at Martinsville. Not bad. Not a good day there for him, but we documented that. 5.4. Gotta love that as well. Um, and then if you just take a look at their their top 10 finishes overall uh, on this track altogether, I mean, listen, for these guys, 
they're all uh, among the top of their their branch. Top 10 finishes for Kyle Larson in two of the last three races on this track. Granted, he did win one. Uh, Denny Hamlin, a top 10 finish in three of the last four as well. A ninth place in 2020, uh, an 11th place in 2021, 10th in 2022, and a fifth place in 2023. Martin Truex Jr., he's the weak link in this one. And he's the weak link in just about every single one that you put in there. But I will say that it was encouraging how he ran uh, a couple of weeks ago. Maybe not last week so much, but, you know, you lead a lot of laps. Even though it's a short track, I'm okay with that. So I'm, I'm kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, he does have a top 10 finish in 2020 on this track. But overall, in his life, 17 top 10 finishes in 34 starts. Granted, uh, a lot of those came uh, before he was driving that 19 car. But um, it's Martin Truex Jr. I mean, at some point, it, something's got to give for this guy. So... You know, he's, he's got five top 10 finishes in eight races this season, uh, including a second at Bristol, a seventh at Phoenix, a seventh at Vegas. So, again, the seventh at Vegas kind of gives me hope as well. But, yeah, give me all three of these guys, Larson, Hamlin, and Truex, all inside of the top 10. I like plus money before that. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, when you look at conventional tracks, uh, Larson, a 9.4 uh, intermediate track average finish. Hamlin, exactly 10th place. Once again, Truex, the the guy that kind of holds you up at 13.7, but still 18 top 10 finishes in 31 races since 2021 on mile and a half. Seems like a pretty decent bet to make. So give me all three of those guys in the top 10. Yeah, I will say, you know, prior to the show, not having top 10 bets available did make me look at the Caesars ones. Actually, I have a, a two, two-legger for top 10s coming up here in a little bit. Um, uh, Larson and Truex, big time wild cards at times. Um, but in all reality, these three guys should fairly easily uh, be inside of the top 10 and getting a good number at plus 150. I hope so. Uh, all right. Speaking of good numbers, listen, it's hard to find good numbers. It's hard to find a good way to bet. But now you can actually find a much better way to bet because we are proud to partner with AVO, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. If you are new to arbitrage sports betting, it's quite simple, actually. Basically, betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit. The AVOS tools scans a sports book looking for discrepancies in the odds. Then they tell you how much money you need to place with each sports book and the expected profit. The tool is super easy to use, lightning fast, as speed is a big part of arbitrage sports betting. The best part of AVO is currently free without restrictions. That's right, completely free. Get started today at arbsvsodds.com. That's A R B S V S odds.com. A R B S V S odds.com. Quick question that I wanted to get to, real quick. Boji, Boji Joe saying, when do you know to bet before practice and qualifying as opposed to after? We talked about this in the uh, in the recap show earlier where it's, listen, if if it's a favorite that you don't think is, or if, you, if it's a favorite that you think is going to qualify well, then it's a good idea to get in on them early because after qualifying, after practice, if they look fast like you think they're going to look fast, those odds are not going to improve. So, but if it's a driver that you think may not do well in qualifying a practice, you hang tight. You get a better number and then go from there. I mean, that's just a simplified answer, but there's still more to yeah, it. Yeah, there's so much that goes into it. I mean, in order to determine if you think in, there's some analytics people out there and stuff, and maybe they can dig more into it, of course, but you have to figure out which side you're going to be on, how they're going to do in practice, how they're going to do in qualifying. And, and again, you look at practice last week at Martinsville and Corey LaJoy was the fastest in practice, but he really was and he was just one of the first cars on the track lay down one good lap and it shows him up top now of course you know 10 and then 30 lap averages and stuff that come out as well but you know and then one bad lap in practice or in qualifying because they make a mistake or something like chandler smith starting dead last his number dropped from you know plus 400 which if i didn't like eric amarola so much i would have probably bet on him at that number but he drops all the way to 12 to 1 there's no way you can predict he was going to drop that far. He could have easily went out, qualified on the pole, and been minus 100 after that. Like, I don't know. I've not found a good way to figure out which side to be on. I think that it's good to save some of your budget for post-practice and qualifying because there's going to be other things. You know, we see more matchups come out later in the week, and, and odds do shift and other stuff where you see something in practice you like or or whatever the case may be. Um, but like I've said before, I – 
I have no problem placing a majority of my bets prior to. It's been successful for us all three years on the show now. So, uh, you know, and we're it's Tuesday. Like the odds are still literally trickling out as we're doing the show. So uh, I, I think that we've we've got a pretty solid system. And again, good building blocks, right? Guys, we're highlighting throughout the week. Keep an eye on them. Maybe you get a good number later. It's it's all just a big balancing game. Yeah, and that's what we've tried to accomplish with the show anyways. It's just a matter of we are bringing these drivers to your attention. We're giving you the odds as they're posted at the time, and obviously they're going to shift. Obviously they're going to change. So, um, yeah, we just we just try to do what we can with what we're given. So speaking of that, Cody, what's our next bet? Yeah, real quick, uh, I did share in the Discord, spicy chili sponsorship this weekend. Stuart Friesen Rod, a beautiful chili truck. It's got the entire menu like put on with all the pictures and stuff of the food. All yeah. over the whole truck. Like, it's little menus, like, all over it. Check it out. It's pretty sweet. It's over in the Discord. Uh, Dos Flacos with his cheers, boys. King saying, apparently, his prediction, opposite of reality. So, with that in mind, he has Ty Gibbs finishing 38 this weekend. Love it. Tried to tell you last week wasn't the week, but I'm going to be talking about him today. So, don't worry. Everybody chats on Eric Jones this week. Uh, I will say he's plus 200 on bet 365 with the top 10 odds that just came out. I like that number. It's not on my card. Um, but yeah, and JDK brought that up as well. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, Rod, next up the chat. I can't even keep up with it. It's great. Love it. Keep it going. Uh, we'll try to keep getting things as we can. I like Ross Chastain this week, Rod, a lot, and I'm going to take him over on Caesars over Christopher Bell plus 110. Um, when it comes to Christopher Bell, could he be really good this week? Absolutely. Will he have a fast car? Probably. Is he really good at qualifying on mile and a half? So maybe you should look at his pole betting odds. Potentially, right? Um, but this is more so a thought on Ross Chastain is going to have a really good week, I think. And Christopher Bell is a bit of a wild card still. We know he's an elite driver. We know how good he is. Final four in the last couple of seasons. But his consistency week to week varies so much. And it's like always something always happens. You look at the last two weeks as good examples when I had bets on him. Last week at, at uh, Martinsville, they, you know, they don't get the tire on all the way, pops off, and they have that issue and, and cost them the day. The week before, he had a fast car, but gets caught speeding on, on pit road. Seems like something's always getting in the way of him. Ross Chastain kind of been off the radar the last couple of weeks because we've been on short tracks, and, and he's not just not been as good on the short tracks um, as he had been before, but you go back and you look at what Ross Chastain has done here at Texas and what he has done uh, on mile and a half just in general. He's been really good. So if you go back to Texas, so um, a couple of notes too. We meant to mention this kind of at the top of the show. Um, but Texas in the past couple of years has been in the fall, and they're moving it to the spring now. It was a playoff race, moving it to the spring. So it's supposed to be pretty warm this weekend. It's going to be – I don't think the weather's going to be much different than it has been in the fall. But that is of note that it's not later in the playoffs, uh, pressure packed. How you kind of cap around that, I don't really know if there is a way. Um, but it's a once a year track as well. So we've only been here, you know, once last season, once in 22. They also did have the all star race here in 22. So you can sort of, I mean, you know, only so much you can take from an all star race. But something I will take from the all star race Ross Chastain had a rocket ship that day. He ended up, if anybody remembers, launching off the front end of Chase Elliott's car in a crazy kind of wreck and ruining his day, but had a rocket that day, and he was fast um, and looked good. But you go back um, the last couple of seasons, he was second place in the fall here last year um, and then 13th in the race in 2022. But you go back to Las Vegas not too long ago, earlier this season, fourth place for Ross Chastain there as well. Um, and, and he's been good here. Uh, on mile and a half over the last couple of seasons. So love Ross Chastain. This is more of a Chastain, uh, you know, face value. You can make a case for either side for sure, but you're getting him at plus money. Bell's minus 140. That's a big number. Bell was fourth here in the fall, but then 34th in 2022, to my point of hard to trust because he's kind of all over the place. Um, just seems like things go back and forth. You know, the speeding at, at Richmond, Issues at Vegas earlier this season in the one mile and a half we had as well. Didn't get a good finish there. So give me Ross Chastain over Christopher Bell plus 110. I'm with you on this one. I wanted to get in on Bell. I felt like this was a, a good opportunity because you see his name. You see pretty decent finishes here and there. But I couldn't either. And I know uh, uh, Boji Joe was talking about uh, Bell winning the poll. I mean, yeah, but. I don't know. I don't know that that 20 team yeah, has felt confident enough to win a poll this year. He's been good. Well, he's been really good at 
polls, especially a mile and a half. So like yeah. him and Tyler Reddick, I would imagine Reddick's numbers are going to be probably one of the favorites. But I would definitely look at him. I don't know that I've seen qualifying poll bets yet. Um, but Bell's definitely what you look at. But even when he started well, if you go back and look specifically a mile and a half, so I don't have it right in front of me. But I remember a trend last season of him starting good on the pole at mile and a half and then finishing 18th or worse in like multiple races just because they can't seem to catch a break. And so you look at his teammate, Denny Hamlin, who's super consistent every week. You can always count on him. And and Bell has got the upside of a Hamlin and can do better than him, but is inconsistent in general. So Bell could come out and win this race. I'm not saying he can't by any means because I think he'll be fast. I think he'll be a good car. But I'll take the consistency of Chastain. Um, and, and, you know, I think the book's cooling off a little bit on him because the last couple of weeks have been short tracks. Keep that in mind when you're placing your bets this this week. Yes, there's momentum from the short tracks, but don't lean too much into just what they did the last couple of weeks at short tracks because it's completely different. It's a different package, different style of racing, and we see a lot of discrepancies in guys. That's why I would even consider betting Kyle Busch this week, you know, if you if you like a number on him because, yeah, the short tracks and road course was shit, but the short tracks and road course have been shit for RCR. They've been okay on the, on the bigger tracks. So just keep that in mind as you're placing bets this week. Keep this in mind, too, as you're placing bets this week. William Byron, good at racing. Uh, so I'm going to take his top three number at plus 210. Uh, I, the only reason that I'm not necessarily leaning all in and doing a full-on car lift on William Byron is, one, they're not really giving us the tools to, to build a car lift with, but two, I, it's hard to win back-to-back -back races in NASCAR. It really is. There's a lot that can go wrong. There's, I mean, even if you look fast every single week, it's just hard to win back-to-back -back races. Now, granted, William Byron has won the most of any driver this season, uh, he's won the three races so far, right? He won at Daytona. He won at Austin. He won at Martinsville. He's won at a super speedway, a road course and a short track. He just needs a mile and a half win, but I don't really necessarily feel like I need to give him a win in this one. A top three is definitely well within his, his, uh, range of possibilities. Why? Well, his average finish here at this track since 2021, February, 2021. So in three races, 3.3, he does have that win. He's got two top fives. He's got three top tens in that he is three for three on top tens two for three on top fives and a win on that one so he's got a second place a seventh place and a first place finish in that span i mean i almost don't have to necessarily get any deeper into that but i will say that uh you want to talk about total speed rankings at high speed mile and a half tracks in 2023 william byron ranks third on that list he was first first at vegas in 2023 uh second at charlotte in 2023 he was fourth in vegas in 2023 so overall, his average speed ranking is 6.29, uh, according to our friends at iFantasy Race. Again, it's just a matter of of him being fast, right? He's just definitely fast all the time. Um, can't can't fault him for that one as well. Uh, Texas 2023 speed ranking chart. He wasn't even the fastest car all day long, but he still ended up winning. He was running seventh uh, in total speed rankings. Uh, totally green flag speed. He was eighth. Fastest in a late run, yes, he was, and fourth segment speed, he was second in that one. So, again, William Byron's name pops, right? Texas Next Gen Speed Rankings, he was second in Texas in 2022, seventh in, but his average is second among all of them, uh, second only to Kyle Larson in this instance. So, like I said, a red hot car, not necessarily asking him to win this race, and a top three at plus two ten, that's definitely not bad considering I'm sure his top five odds are going to be nuked to the point where you don't want to touch him. So. Give me Byron top three plus 210. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you against the best driver in the next-gen car and the best driver in the series right now. I mean, William Byron is him, Rod, as the kids would say. Uh, again, with the chat real fast, the Bubba bet. Literally, I put this in the dock less than an hour ago. It was minus 115. It was minus 135 when Anthony said this. It's now minus 140. Oof. So uh, you're listening live, apparently. Make sure you're on YouTube, uh, NASCAR Gambling Podcast. Hit the, hit the subscribe and the bell as well um and then drake was asking if they're in iowa so i'm not i'm in nebraska non-legal states so it allows me to switch between states and i'm looking at iowa and it, i do see it in there so um go back and listen to the directions that i probably was didn't give very good as well um and boji joe i will answer this question for you in a few minutes because i do have a good bet on one of these guys but first rod next up for me i'm going to take carson hosovar to win group f over on caesar's over Corey LaJoy, Josh Berry, and Austin Sindrick. He's plus 220 to win this group. Um, look, I continue to be impressed by Carson Hosovar. Um, and he's just been solid. 
You go back and you look at this season, 15th place at Vegas, a very strong run for a Spire car at a mile and a half already this season. He was also 15th at Phoenix, 17th last week at Martinsville. Again, not comparable tracks, but to the point of he's carrying the consistency throughout the season. I think that that's important to look at. 16th place here in the fall rod in the 42 car, a shit car throughout most of the season that he did really well in. Again, they were in limbo, still driving Chevys, but knew they were going to be switching to Toyota. They weren't getting all the all the info and everything. 16th place. He was 20th at, at Kansas um, as well. So good, strong finishes. You look at the other guys in this group. Yeah, Corey LaJoy, Rod. I love Corey LaJoy. You know that. We're going to bet on him again in a couple weeks here at Talladega. Actually, is Talladega next week already? I think it Oof. is. Right. Um, anyways, not to get ahead of not to get ahead of things, but uh love Corey LaJoy. Hosmar's been showing him up on these regular tracks, or regular, quote unquote, right? Uh, and and I think you gotta take him. Corey's been on a real weak streak the last couple of weeks, too. I mean, it's been pretty rough for him for a little while. So kind of fading him. Josh Berry, look, I get it. He was fast at, at short tracks the last couple of weeks, but this isn't the track anymore, Rod. We're getting out of that. Um, and for Barry, 20th at Vegas. Not very good there either. By the way, Corey was 32nd at Vegas too, so not good on him. Um, Austin Sendrick, is he still in the Cup Series, Rod? I didn't even notice that he was out there anymore. So 29th for him at Las Vegas. So if you're just looking at Las Vegas, um, you know, from earlier this season, 16th for Ho- or 15th for Hosovar, 20th for Barry, 29th for Sendrick, 32nd for Corey. I think it's probably going to be pretty similar results. So. This is kind of your shitbox group, I guess you could say. But uh, I think hard not to match him up with LaJoy because LaJoy should be better than him in the same equipment, right? But hasn't been. Barry's an SHR car fast the last two weeks, Rod. Don't forget those were short tracks. And and then Cindric, again, he, I got a milk carton over here with his face on it because I haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what? And to me, hosts of ours do because it feels like he's just been sort of he's been there. He's been hanging around and, and I don't think he's gotten the finishes that he's deserved. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like, go hosts of our, you know, we loved him in the truck series and I just needs a really good run. Although he did skip over one. So I'll have to go back and get that one uh, later on your, your bet. Um, oh, did I? Oh, I did. Whoops. That's right. I've been talking a lot this show, Rod. So I'm all over the place. The it's chat's hard. keeping me distracted, which I like. I like that too. Um, all right. So my next one, I woke up this morning and chose violence. But really what I what I woke up and I'm gonna try to be on the right side of Joy Logano this time, and maybe to the chagrin of a lot of people out there that are Tyler Reddick fans. Uh they got Joy Logano matched up with Tyler Reddick. I know you're a Reddick fan. Uh, but again, listen, okay, so the Joy Logano, Tyler Reddick, Logano is plus a hundred, so it's even money for the Joy Logano side, which is what I'm going to take. I say this with love in my heart for Tyler Reddick, but when you look at what's gone on this season, yes, he's got five top tens and eight starts, but Tyler Reddick's supposed to be running better than this. Tyler Reddick is supposed to be competing for the win each and every week, but he's barely holding on in some cases for a top 10 finish. And he's gotten a second place at Las Vegas. That was great. He started 18th though. So he had to fight his way up through that. Looked pretty good. A 10th at Phoenix, which again, he was supposed to be better at Phoenix. Right, 30th Bristol, that's a short track, whatever. Fifth on a road course, he's supposed to be good there, but he was supposed to win that race. The expectations are high for Tyler Reddick. He is he is not faster uh, than... Are you talking team. about 2024 NASCAR Cup Series champion Tyler Reddick, Rob? I'm talking about 2024 NASCAR champion Tyler. He's got to step things up, but I don't... And he may. He may get a top 10 finish again. He may get a top five, uh, five finish again. But look, Joey Logano's also been okay for what he's supposed to he's actually exceeding expectations because we don't expect much out of joey logano right he got a ninth place in vegas but he started on the pole had some trouble but worked his way back up to a ninth place finish uh thankfully for that bad day at phoenix i get it uh second at richmond six at martinsville so for joey logano like I, i feel like he he got a good finish last week a sixth place finish for him which and then second place in richmond so the last two weeks for joey have been going well which is why i think for him, there's a little more mental push toward doing well again this season uh, or this week, rather, versus Tyler Reddick, who is frustrated because he's getting these 19th place starts and 17th place finish, 19th place start at Richmond, 10th place. He's got to fight his way through so many mistakes, not just in pit road, but whatever. And he's coming to a track that, frankly, it's been mixed bag for him, right? In the eight car, he had some pretty good years. He won this one, right, in 2022, So, but that was the eight car. 
last year, his first one in the 45, 25th place finish on this track altogether. So, again, I mean, the recency bias of him not finishing well. Now, granted, Joey Logano only finished 21st, but that's still better than him in 25th. Uh, and then Joey Logano got a second place finish in 2020, uh, 30th, 10th, 3rd, 4th. Right in 28 starts, Joey's got 15 top 10 finishes, 12 top fives, and a win. So I'm banking on the fact that Logano is feeling better than Reddick heading into this track and uh, and that he upholds his end of the bargain. Not saying that Tyler Reddick can't get a top five or a top whatever, but I feel like Joey's got a better potential for a better day. A couple of things on this one, Rod. First of all, I'm not going to try and predict Joey Logano because I rarely do because he's the hardest driver in the garage to predict. Tyler Reddick, I know he wasn't good the last couple of weeks, wasn't supposed to be good. The road course didn't go how it was supposed to. I get it. Phoenix, he was actually probably going to win the race till Denny Hamlin spun out. Vegas, though, the other mile and a half again. Don't know, don't look too much into the short tracks. Vegas, he was the next best car. A couple more laps. Maybe he runs Larson down. I love Tyler Reddick this week. Rod, I don't have any bets on Tyler Reddick this week because I'm trying to not unjinx him or something. I've got the championship bet, which Robert, by the way, is saying William Byron's going to win the championship. Really going out on a limb there. By the way, he won the most races last year. Didn't win the championship either, so keep that in mind. Um, but, uh, yeah, Tyler Reddick's numbers are just all real real high this week because, uh, what was it? Yeah, Boji Joe said Tyler Carlift and Trophy. I would love to see it. I don't have any bets on him, but uh, I don't know that I would I would take this either. But, eh, I don't know. Just not feeling it, Rob. That's okay. You don't have to feel it. We could be on opposite <laughs> sides of it. As, as we found out, it, it works that we're on opposite sides. Of By the way, if you only listen to the cup show and you hear Rod and I just agree a lot all the time, tune into the Xfinity series show because it gets pretty heated at times. Uh, we had multiple bets against each other last week. Uh, we split. We went one and one on either side. Um, led to a formal apology from my part. <laughs> Rod shit Rod shit talking on the recap. Show. Again, don't miss the recap show earlier in the week because <laughs> Rod was talking shit, which Rod, if you know him, uh, not a shit talking type of guy. So it was great to see, which was, <laughs> which was wonderful. All right, Rod, we'll go off of WrestleMania. It just, it's it carried <laughs> over. We'll go back on the, uh, bet that I skipped over here a few minutes ago. So I got a couple of, <laughs> I loaded this box up again, a lot of stuff I like this week. So I'll try and talk fast. So since we didn't have top 10 bets prior to recording the show, I was looking at the top 10, you know, parlays over that Caesars has pre-built. They have William Byron and Denny Hamlin together plus 105 on Caesars. I actually really like this. You're getting a good number for two strong drivers. You gave out the one, though, three earlier, and, and that's okay. I think that can hit two, but you have to get three guys. In this case, you only have to get two guys, and it's two guys you can rely on. Guys like Kyle Larson, yeah, he should be the best driver. Guys like Tyler Reddick should be super fast, but they're super inconsistent. Christopher Bell is another one, right? Should be really good, could be fast, but... Half the time they win, half the time they wreck, and it's inconsistency. With William Byron, with Denny Hamlin, you're not getting that rod. I went back and I looked. Las Vegas, Byron was 10th, Hamlin was 8th, so we squeaked it in, but both of them got in the top 10. You go back to last season, we had seven true mile-and-a-half tracks. I did lump Miami in here, even though that's not a direct comp, but basically you have two races at Kansas, you have two races at Las Vegas, you have one race at Texas, one race at Miami, one race at Charlotte. So seven true mile and a half tracks. Uh, William Byron had a 15th place at Kansas too. Every other race, he was inside of the top, um, inside of the top 10. So, you know, four in a row, if you include Vegas in the last three last season, seven of eight over the last eight from last season and this season. Four, Denny Hamlin, um, five of seven last season, six of eight overall last season with Vegas included. The two that he didn't, Rod, in 11th place at Las Vegas, so one spot outside of it. And then at the Coke 600, if you remember, Chase Elliott hooked him early, ended up getting suspended for wrecking him, and Hamlin didn't get the result there, so hard to know. But these guys are freaking consistent everywhere, really, just in general, and really consistent on a mile and a half. So I like putting them together and getting, you know, it's basically even money, plus 105. Um, but I do think that's a really good way. I'm always skeptical of the, you know, parlay and top 10s and stuff because, Sometimes you're not getting a great number and you got to get multiple guys. You know, one guy does it, the other guy doesn't. But these are two really strong, consistent guys. They should be top 10 cars. They should both be competing for the win. Um, so I like that at plus 105. I'm going to go over to the top Toyota market, Rod. Um, Ty Gibbs, 
King, if you're still listening, on Ty Gibbs for the top finishing Toyota this week. Um, some people have tossed out uh, Eric Jones. I, I think Toyota is going to be very competitive this week as far as guys towards the top. So I don't necessarily like taking the long shot. You've got Tyler Reddick. I expect him to be fast. I expect him to be good. But I just mentioned, Rod, oh, not always consistent, right? Sometimes he doesn't finish races. You got to keep that in mind. Got Denny Hamlin as well. I expect him to be good. I expect him to be consistent and have a good finish. Ty Gibbs, however, at 7-1, to one, did beat Denny Hamlin at Las Vegas earlier this season already. So you've got that. Bubba Wallace, I'm going to talk. Oh, I've already talked about, I guess. Um, I expect him to have a good day as well. Um, then Truex, not too interested in Christopher Bell. Again, super inconsistent. Ty Gibbs all the way at 7-1. to one. I feel like Ty Gibbs at, at 7-1 to one is a really good price here um, because you're getting a guy who – finished fifth place or seventh place rather or yeah fifth place at las vegas already earlier this season rod and proved that day i wasn't the top toyota because reddick was ahead of him but he proved he can hang around and he can be just as good as any of the other ones he was the top finishing gibbs car on the day when you've got denny ham christopher bell and martin truex jr in that camp i think seven to one is good value seventh place in the point standings this season he's dropped a little bit over the last couple of weeks again don't look too much into the short tracks but he, he's been having a good, solid season, uh, and he's been consistent. So like Ty Gibbs for top Toyota. And then since the top 10 numbers uh, popped up as well over on Bet365, toss this one in there uh, as we started recording the show. Minus 120 for Gibbs. I don't think that number sticks there. Um, again, don't let, don't let the last two weeks, short tracks, extenuating circumstances of him falling off. Three weeks ago, he was the hottest driver in all the series. Everybody's talking about him. They're all going to forget, and I want to talk about him now. This is when we need to get back on him, talk about him. He's going to have another good, strong run this week. Full, you know. And again, I'm not saying that I'm the barometer of what Ty Gibbs is going to do, but I was right last week, sit, laying off of him a little bit and, and not thinking he's going to have a great race. I think he is this week. So top Toyota, I think, is, is good value at 7-1. to one. I, don't see, I don't think he will be the top Toyota because I think, although he's got a shot to win this race, I, I was very close to putting him on my card to win, Rod. I ended up pivoting to someone else, but... Um, I do like Gibbs top Toyota seven to one and, and love them at, at the top 10 at minus 120. And then also I squeezed into this this one bet uh, box, Byron and Hamlin top five together at 105. Uh, I right, like your, your turn. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I like them all. And and honestly, the Hamlin part of it, I already made the case for and, and Byron for sure. Both of those guys. I do like Byron. Obviously, if he's a top three, he's going to be a top 10. And if I think Hamlin's going to finish in the top 10 with all the rest of those guys, I think he's going to be in there, too. I, I got to see it from Gibbs. I, if this week is the week I see it, I'm okay with him again. But I, it's just been rough. And, and I feel like he's just getting, you know, he hasn't gotten his full potential yet. And I don't know what that is, what exactly that is. Uh, maybe a sophomore slump. But we'll, we'll start to see better things from Ty Gibbs. And hopefully it starts this week for you guys and you Ty Gibbs fans. Um, all right. So I'm going to go away from drivers in general and go to drivers to lead a lap. Uh, I love this one. It's on Caesars. Uh, the number is set at 11 and a half. Give me the over over 11 and a half drivers to lead a lap in this race at minus 115. We are two for two in the next gen era for uh, this number to hit the over 13 last year and uh, and 15 the year before that. I'll tell you right now in that 2022 auto trader, the the I'm, when I look at driver or when I look at racing reference, right, there's a box that always shows you drivers to lead a lap right it shows you exactly which lap numbers they led from joey logano led the first lap then it was brad kazowski then it was joey logano but listen in that there were also guys like ricky stenhouse harrison burton bj mcleod to lead a lap uh michael mcdowell ended up leading a lap kevin harvick led a lap in this one todd gilliland led a lap in 2023 you want to talk about a lot of different drivers leading laps uh in 2022 rather i'm sorry that's the 2022 that's 15 race car drivers uh, to lead a lap in the 2022 uh, trader race. But still, in 2023, among the names of drivers to lead a lap, right? There was Bubba, there was AJ, there was Alex, there was Ty Dillon, Chase Elliott uh, got in there, JJ Yaley led a lap, Eric Jones, Austin Sindrick led a lap as well. So a lot of names that, because pit strategy does factor into this, especially um, in, in the course of the mile and a half around this, 400 miles is a lot of, of opportunity for these guys to lead. There's 22 lead changes in the 2023 race. There was 36 lead changes in the race before that. So that is a lot of lead changes, and that is a lot of opportunity for drivers to lead laps. So, um, yeah, we're two for two hitting it in the next-gen era. So 
I figure this is probably going to be another, you know, 13, 15. Uh, and then in Las Vegas, we actually hit this number uh, as well. We hit the over on this one in Las Vegas. So, you know, again, if we're, if we're one for one hitting it this season in the, uh, in the neck or in this car, then, uh, you know, and there's look guys like Daniel Hemrick led a lap in Las Vegas. Uh, Suarez led a lap, Hashtag right? Jason trophies. Hashtag Jason trophies. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're on track for this to, to be a good, uh, 12 lead or 12 drivers to lead a lap in this race. So give me the over 11 half minus 115 drivers to lead a lap. Yeah. No argument there. Boji Joe saying 11.5 is the number of cautions on Caesars. That's I don't see that. that, but if that's true, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I would hammer the under, right, Rod? Yeah. I mean, well, this is why well, this is why I caution you on that one, right? There was exactly 11 cautions last season uh, on this track. There were 16 the year before that. So yeah. we're one for two. We just haven't been seeing cautions in the Cup Series. I, I know we've been short tracks, but how many were it? Do you, I don't know if you have it right in front of you six on Vegas. In Vegas. There were only six, six yeah. in Vegas. Yeah, I think, I think it ends up being a lot more like that. Also, Boji Joe wants to know why neither of us are talking about Larson. Uh, so this is actually... Yeah. Something I, I would like to talk about real quick. You did bring him up in your top 10 three-way parlay, so you did have him there. Um, but something that, you know, if, you, if you're tuning in and, and you're not so much betting, like you're just looking at talking for the race and stuff, uh, sometimes you don't always give out the obvious favorites. So Larson, you know, led a shit ton of laps, won Las Vegas. He's probably going to win this weekend, right? But there's a couple of things here. Just talked about his inconsistency. Yes, a lot of times he's going to win your races and lead a ton of laps, but if not, he's going into the sand barriers or making this mistake and wrecking or doing this or him and Bubba are getting into it a hundred times like they did here at Texas before, right? So you've got to take that into consideration. Then if you compare odds, so if you go to race winner odds, you've got Larson at four to one. Okay, yeah, he should be the favorite at four to one. Maybe that's a good bet, but William Byron's at seven to one. Byron's been doing better in the next gen car. He's won more races. He's been more impressive. So if you've got to pick one, why wouldn't you take the other one? You look at the top three number, you gave out Byron a plus 210. Larson's only plus 125. Do you want plus 125 on a guy who's much less consistent? So it's not the fact that we don't like Larson or that we're going um, against him or anything. I we won't be surprised if he comes out and he ends up winning this race. Like it's not going to shock anyone. That's that's the most likely outcome. But when it comes to betting, not a ton of great ways to get in on him. I mean, you found one with, with parlaying him for top tens there, but um, it's just sometimes it's uh, betting is a lot more about number, the number you're getting than just the picks. I mean, if we were just coming on here. Oh, who's going to win? Oh, Kyle Larson. Like, yeah, we could say that, but that's the most obvious pick. Like, as far as betting, is that worth it at four to one? Yeah, if he comes out and smokes the field, would have been nice to have him at four to one. But if he comes out and does Kyle Larson things and fucks it up somehow, or William Byron just outraces him at a, almost twice the number, might be might be better. So again, nothing against Larson. It's just you have to factor in the number always, Rob. And spoiler alert too, I had him in my winner's box. And then I just I took him out because I thought to myself, this is too obvious. One and two. You know, again, it's it just it's difficult to say that Kyle Larson can come out and kick everyone's ass because that's easy to say. And and I was probably even going to say that, too, when I when I set up the winner bet, because it is very easy to come out and say Kyle Larson is going to lead every single lap of this race. He's going to go home the winner and we could just pretty much wrap up the show now. But, you know, it, it's you can do that. You can bet Kyle Larson. And I'm not we're not telling yeah, you but not if to. you bet and if you bet Kyle Larson four to one every week, because. Let's face it, his odds are pretty close to that in a general every week. How many races did he win last year, Rod? Four? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it was five, but it's you're not really coming out positive. So, again, it's all about chasing the number, and yeah, we'll get favorites sometimes. We've done it plenty of times. Tune into the Xfinity race tomorrow. Chandler Smith plus 350. Likely he's going to make my card, right? But eh, it's worked out for us well over there. It's you got to pick and choose your spots when you're getting in on them. And and that's not to say we won't have spots where we pick Larson. If he wins this race, or we get to Kansas in two weeks, Rod, or three weeks, or whatever it is, and then he's two for two on mile and a half, but then he's probably only plus 250. We probably won't take him then either. So who knows? But it's uh, there's a lot, lot that goes into it. So, all right, Rod, next up, speaking of numbers, we now have numbers for the top tens. I was not as close as I had hoped I would be on my – on my uh, handicapping of this, but that's okay. We have real numbers from Bet365. I'm going to take Brad Keselowski, plus 140. I know there's been a lot of Eric Jones love in here. 
um, at plus 200. I think he's he's worth looking at as well. But I have more faith in Brad Keselowski. These are the two guys that kind of waffled back and forth on. Rod, last seven times we've been here for Brad Keselowski. Now, again, only two of those times have been in the next-gen car. Only two of those times have been in the RFK car. So keep that in, in mind. But in seven races, his last seven races here, Rod, how many times do you think Brad Keselowski is not finished in the top ten? Uh, I'm going to give you one. Zero. Ah, Seventh, see. eighth, ninth, fourth, second, sixth, and ninth are his last seven finishes here. Super consistent at Texas. He's been really good here. Um, 13th at Las Vegas here early in the spring. So not top 10, but hanging around pretty close, right? Fourth at Las Vegas in the fall. He was seventh here last year, as I mentioned. He was ninth at Kansas too. Fourth place at Michigan. He had a seventh place at Auto Club last year. These RFK cars show up and, and they end up being pretty good. A lot of the times uh, we saw uh, which one of the mile and a half. I think uh, Busher won on last year as well. I don't remember which one, or maybe he won Michigan. Fuck, I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, so I like Kozlowski, top 10. Plus 140, I think you're getting good value there over on Bet365. And then Rod, Noah Gregson, plus 450 over on Bet365. Sixth place finish at Las Vegas. Let's not forget that. Um, yeah, I didn't do great last week at Martinsville. Richmond wasn't a bad race for him, but he has been doing pretty well this season. I've been very impressed. And, and I think the 10th place finish, he's one for one top 10s. And you're getting him a plus 450. I'm not going to go back and look at last year. I don't care about last year. He didn't race this race anyways because he was gone by that point in time. That It was a different story last year. It's a different story this year. Again, I think you're getting good value on 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 Gregson. I almost said Briscoe because I, I know that's been brought up in the chat as well. Briscoe's like plus 800. I know some people are liking that. Um, but if we think Briscoe can do it, I know Gregson can do it. The more talented driver. Um, so. Uh, I do like Noah Gregson at plus 450. And then I wanted to bring up those Flacco's too had mentioned a group here earlier. Um, but I would stay away from this group because anybody could win this group. But he's got Bowman over Logano, Busher, and Brad. I like Brad, obviously. Busher and Brad are always back to back. So good luck picking which one goes in that. Bowman should be decent. And Logano, you like him. I don't ever know what to do with him. So uh, I would. <laughs> Uh, uh, ones like that I would avoid. And then Boji Joe says, Noah, you were correct. I believe was it Boji Joe that had asked earlier about which, uh, yeah, here we go, which SHR car has a chance. He guessed Noah. You are correct, Boji Joe. Gold star for you. Gold star for everybody out there. Uh, love in the chat. Keep it hopping. All right, I'm going to go to the margin of victory. I'm going to try this one again. Uh, the margin of victory between 1.001 and 2 seconds. I like this one. This one's at plus 350 for that one. Uh, we are two for two in the next gen generation of cars uh, on this track. Last year, the margin of victory was 1.863 between William Byron and Ross Chastain. In 2022, the uh, margin of victory between Tyler Reddick and Joey Logano was 1.190. Uh, Tyler Reddick screwed up. Uh, for the uh, for this one in Las Vegas because he ended up being faster at the end. Kyle Larson did have uh, about a two second gap between Reddick, but those last few laps, man, Reddick was just fantastically fast. But uh, again, this is not a race that's going to necessarily string out a whole lot, but it's also not going to be uh, a, a giant let him get in front for a million years one because we've seen, like Cody said, in this next gen car, when you've got cars, when you got 15 different leaders when you've got 22 different lead changes 36 different lead changes that does not string this race out which means that the the gap is not all that wide so one to two seconds on this one is is definitely a good cushion and like i said over the last two years in this next gen it has been between 1.001 and two seconds so i i think that's going to continue again uh this week because like i said it's and maybe we get a late caution Right. And we'd go to green, white and somebody jumps out to a second lead. Second's not that not far. Honestly, it, it's it seems like a lot you know, shorter than it should be. But it's you know, it, it's not hard to, to get a second out, um, especially on Texas. So Boji Joe wants to know how you uh, pick this rod or how do you handicap it? My guess in the chat was dartboard. I'm guessing that's not the true answer, but uh, 
But how how do you go about this one, Ron? No, listen. So I mean, when you look at at, at the the fun bets that you can make, that's the thing I love that we got to take advantage of these funner, these more fun bets that that Caesars gives us because if we don't, they take them away. Uh, but you know, these are fun. And how do you handicap it? Well, you look back at the last couple of seasons. Now, if you have a much uh, wider, uh, cause I didn't look back anything before the next gen generation, because obviously we know that the next gen car is much different than, than this one, especially on Texas. Cause if you compare too many next or past next gen results to this one, you're not going to get a, a good outcome. So the two next gen car or races that we've had, it's been within this. So we're two for two so far. Let's make it three for three. Uh, in the in the finishes between um, you know, one point zero zero one and two seconds. Plus, it's always fun to have another angle. Yeah, you want the drivers and and to bet on the drivers. Um, you know, it's just fun to to bet on these to have an extra uh, edge, I guess, and an extra thing to cheer for in the race. It's the same thing that we do in F one when we when we pick fastest laps. It's not necessary. You can't really handicap a fastest lap. You just have to kind of. Pick what you like and go with it. So, yeah, I like it. No arguments from me here. I think to your point of it being close too. I mean, you look back at Las Vegas, right? Larson led a ton of laps, but Reddick was right there at the end, kind of running him down. The drivers have been talking about it a lot. You know, in this car, it doesn't give them the ability to just run away. And and really, how often? I mean, North Wilkesboro last year. There's been a couple. You know, uh, New Hampshire where Truex did it. There's been a couple of old-fashioned ass whoopings right but we don't really have a ton of races where guys are just running away from the field um so i I do like the handicap in that rod all right we've made it to the outrights are you ready for some winners let's go uh top of the board is really hard this week you you look at it and and there's quite a few guys up here who can win we talked about larson a four to one He's just so hard to bet at that number. That's why I didn't take him. Reddick, I wanted to bet six to one though. Man, it's tough. Byron's at seven to one. I mean, what does William Byron have to do to get some respect? I almost bet at him just out of principle, Rod. Seven to one. The guy's the king of the next gen car, and he shows up every week. He's consistent. He can win at any time, and he's the most previous winner here. I didn't pick him, but you can make the case for him. Ryan Blaney's been good here. You can make the case like you can make a case for any of these favorites, Rod. But I landed on Dennis Hamlin, seven to one. Um, look, he's already got multiple wins this season, so he's been getting it done. And he's been really, really good at the mile and a half as well. We highlight Reddick as being good. We highlight Bubba as being good. Guess who owns their car? Guess who has all of the ins and outs of that? Denny Hamlin. And, and he's put it to good use. You go back and you look at, at last season, he wins the Kansas one race. Um, and that was one, you know, runs, um, runs Kyle Larson down at the very end. I was there. It was super awesome to watch him win that race. It was a lot of fun. You go to places like Michigan. Again, a little bit of a bigger track, but very comparable. Third place there has a strong run. Another place where Reddick was super fast that day, but doesn't get the result because something happens. Uh, Kansas, too. He should have won. They go into overtime. Reddick gets the fresher tires, luckily, because we had a bet on Reddick there and, and ends up winning. Um, you know, Fifth place here at Texas. Uh, so solid, strong runs a mile and a half last year from Denny Hamlin. He's already got some momentum this season. Uh, I feel in a Hamlin week this week. I think, I don't remember which show it was that I was listening to, either Dorm Up for Clear or Corey LaJoy stacking pennies. Um, but one of them mentioned, like, look, it's been all Hendrick and Gibbs winning this season again. We're kind of back to that part again, right? It's been Suarez won at, at Atlanta, but otherwise it's been all Hendrick and, and Gibbs cars. So kind of pick your poison at this point. You just have to pick the one you like. Hamlin's the guy for me this week. He's shown us time and time again. He can set it up, be in the right position. Maybe he doesn't dominate the race, but you get that late race caution. He makes a veteran move, takes the win, so I like him. Um, I waffled on this next bet around a little bit, Rod. Um, and I considered Ty Gibbs here 15-16-1. to 16 to 1. I ended up taking him for top motor earlier instead. I just can't not bet on Bubba Wallace this week at 18-1. to 1. He dominated this race. Left. He was the dominant car. In the fall last time we were here, he led 111 laps, that late race caution. He fucked up the restart. You know he's got that in the back of his mind. And with Bubba, that can go either way, yes. But I think he's pretty good at channeling that into wanting to do better and and doing it well. Like I said, he'd been good here in prior to the next-gen car when 2311 was a good team, good here with RPM, um, and very, very strong a mile and a half last year. 
fourth at Vegas in the fall, fourth at Kansas one. He was third place at Kansas two when he blew a tire hit the wall, fourth at Charlotte, seventh at Darlington even, third place at Texas here, um, uh, sixth place at Miami. Really, really good. Um, and then Ross Chastain is the other guy for me, Rod. Talked about him earlier in a head-to-head. 16 to 1, I think, is a really good number for Ross Chastain. Um, second place finish here last year. Almost won the all-star race. He was fourth place at Las Vegas earlier this season. Again, don't let the last couple of weeks cloud you. A road course, short tracks. Yes, they matter, but they don't necessarily matter. Um, then you go back to to last season, fifth place at Vegas in the fall. So fifth and or yeah, fifth place at Vegas in the fall. He was second here. Fifth at Kansas. He won Nashville as well. Not a super comparable track, but there are some things that kind of relate as far as Nashville style over to uh, um, where are we at? Texas. Uh, so Ross Chastain at sixteen to one, really sneaky. Um, I think bet this week. So Hamlin, Bubba, Ross, uh, and then JDK is wondering, Rod, how am I not on Elliott this week? And, you know why? Uh, JDK? I, I will say I was not the first person in the dock this week. And uh, that will explain to you why I was not. Uh, because, JDK, I am on Elliott this week at 16 to 1 over on ESPN. Uh, I love this number. I found it at 12 to 1, I think. Uh, I think the Caesars had it at 12 to 1. Uh, I know Bet365 had it at like, I think, 14 or, or something like that. So uh, when I saw 16 to 1 on Elliott on ESPN, I said, yes, please. And listen, I, I sat back for a second on this one. I honestly, it to me, it was it was either Byron or Elliot, and I was like, but I said earlier, it's very very difficult for uh, for someone to um, to win back to back in NASCAR. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and give Elliot the nod because listen, coming off of that third place finish last week, this is he's a champion. I I, I don't feel like I need to handicap Chase Elliot any more than anybody else has to because we know the potential of Chase Elliot. We know that that nine car is fast every single week. It just it's just a matter of can it be fast uh, at, at a particular racetrack, right? So um, I, I got to give the nod. Elliot has not won on this r- uh, racetrack. His, uh, I mean, his his finishes are actually not even that stellar. His average finish, 13.1. I can make more of a case for you not to bet Chase Elliott to, to win this race versus winning this race. But there's just something about the last couple of weeks for, for Chase Elliott, right? Fifth place at Richmond. I know it's a short track. I know we threw it out. Uh, about third place at Martinsville. He had to overcome a very rough start to his season, right? 14th, 15th, 12th, 19th. Okay, Rod, that's a very tough, but it is for a guy like Chase Elliott, who is used to winning races, who is used to holding championship trophies, who is used to being the top man at this sport. Listen, our friends at iFantasy Race, right? Ryan has this total speed ranking states at conventional tracks heading into Texas. Well, Chase Elliott sits in fifth place right now among names like Blaney, Truex, Hamlin, and Larson. And for what we remember Elliott's season being, it's, this is, for him to be fifth, that's saying something to you. That, that's within striking distance of being a winning car. And we saw last week that that Hendrick camp has not gone away. And I know that uh, he is itching for a win. He could have had, he should have had, probably was the car to win last week, right? Just didn't happen for him. They're going to come out fast. They're going to come out fiery. And I think Chase Elliott at 16 to 1 is going to be the man. So, Boji Joe says he can hear the siren now in Dawsonville. Uh, it is a siren, not a horn. Uh, Phil checking in, full tank with Phil. Great stuff as always. Thank you, Phil. We appreciate it. Um, make sure you check out Phil, too, by the way. First, first guy in the podcast space for this. So, uh, love him. I do like the Chase Elliott pick. I think at 16 to 1, there's good value there. I think Dover in two weeks is where I'm really targeting him. I think that's where he he finally gets to win the streak over um, and gets it done. Um, but I, I'm from the Midwest, too, and uh, it's a side rain. So get it right, Bojo. Oh, geez, come on. Indeed. Anyways, uh, uh, but yeah, all right. Rod, Rod beat me to it, so he gets the Elliott pick. I love it. All right, we've got to speed through these. Get out your pen and paper. Got to go over our bets. And for those of you watching on YouTube, make sure you're checking it out. Cody started you out with Denny Hamlin under six and a half finishing position at minus 115. Threw in Bubba at under 12 and a half at minus 115 as well. I said Larson, Hamlin, Truex all would be top 10 cars at plus 150. Cody gave you Ross Chastain over uh, Christopher Bell at plus 110. I gave you William Byron as a top three car at plus 210. 
Cody gave you Byron and Hamlet both in the top 10 at plus 105. I gave you Logano over Reddick at plus 100. Cody gave you Gibbs as a top Toyota at plus 700. I gave you Logano over Reddick at plus 100. Cody gave you Josevar to win Group F at plus 220. I said that over 11 and a half drivers would lead a lap at minus 115. Cody gave you Keselowski as a top 10 car and Gragson as a top 10 car. I said the margin of victory for this race would be between one and two seconds, essentially. Uh, Cody gave you Hamlin, Bubba, and Chastain. Hamlin at 7 to 1, Bubba at 15 to 1, Chastain at 16 to 1 to win the race. I gave you Elliott at 16 to 1 to win the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. Cody? We've reached the end, my friend. Whew. We got one minute to spare, Rod. I know you got to get out the door. I'm sorry I talked a lot, but a uh, lot to talk about this week. It's going to be a fun week. Everything's bigger in Texas, Rod, including our bank accounts after the weekend. But make sure you come back the next couple of days. Xfinity and Trucks, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss these shows. We're doing really, really well in them as well. And it's more action. It's more racing. It is the full basket. So make sure you come back checking those out. And then, of course, we'll finish out the weekend with DFS Underdog. Rod, in the meantime, follow me on the X at Husker underscore Z. Find all my stuff over there. And uh, F1 Gambling Podcast recap is up as well. So check that out. See you guys tomorrow. Indeed. I'm on X at RJ Via Gomez. Link in the bottom of everything I've got going on. You can find it all there. And we'll be back tomorrow with more of the NASCAR Gambling Podcast. Thanks for hanging with us, everybody. We'll see you again. Until then, let's go racing and let it ride.